Hey guys, I wanted to start the video out today, show you a couple quick things that are going on. I put the Gorgonian in the 20 gallon. I also wanted to show you how quickly Gorgonians grow. This is already growing down the skeleton and onto the rock. This has only been about two weeks. I also wanted to show you the chalice coral here. When I first put this in, it was not attaching itself to the live rock there. You can see it's now moving down and covering the live rock. That's pretty cool. So that's only been a week. Everything's looking good in here too. My last short, I say how I scrape my glass clean on the back and the sides. The reason why I'm leaving it on this 20 gallon is I have a lawnmower blenny in here and all they do all day long is hit the glass, hit the glass, pick on the glass. If there's no algae on there, I'm afraid it's going to starve in a 20 gallon. It's eating food that I provide for it, meaty food, but that's not enough for them. They need to eat constantly, so that's why I'm letting it grow on the sides here. I also wanted to make mention of my lighting in here. I'm not thrilled with the way it looks on the sand bed. I'm getting that disco ball effect. Up here, it looks fine. And I like the way the coloring and the way it looks. In the last setup before the mushrooms, I had a Kessel A80 in here, which is a more white light. You can get it so it shows more white and not the blue hue and that takes that away so I may get another Kessel A80 just for that reason. See on this tank how you don't see it? You don't see that on the 75 because I have two of the Kessel A three Kessel A80s up here. So the Kessel A80 will take away that disco ball effect. You may even see some diatoms forming on the sand bed. Somebody was asking me how to keep diatoms off sand beds. This is a sand bed that came from an existing tank. It's been seeded and even then it still collects diatoms because I rinsed it and cleaned it with salt water, of course. The best way that I know in my experience is hermit crabs and I don't have any in here. I have maybe one in here. So I have some of those on order for that. I also wanted to show you my green star polyp, guys. It's really making a comeback, you know? There's no magical parameter for green star polyp. I found that it grows in higher phosphate level, which is in my 10 gallon over here with less flow. This has grown far deeper green and longer in higher phosphate levels. I've noticed it to get better since I've increased my magnesium is up to 1400 now. So just an update, it looks a lot better and it's growing in a lot thicker than it was say a month ago. I'm gonna show you today, I put some Bergia nudibranch or nudibranch, however you wanna say it, into the tank and I'm going to show you how I did that and some of the results. Hey guys, so this is what I'm doing today. Bergia nudibranch or nudibranch. I have five to get rid of these guys. I've had a video done in the past on these, but I thought I'd show you and update you on what I'm doing. I have five in here, medium size from Reef Town in Florida. They're really nice. Jeff is a nice guy down there. And what they do is they attack and eat the Aptasia. And it's the only thing that I've found that really is successful with these guys. I've used the products that are out there and they get rid of them temporarily and then they grow back either elsewhere or in the same spot. They have a high powered UV thing that melts them now, and I don't know the result of that, but I don't have $400 to spend on that. That's what they wanted for that. So what I do, acclimate water temperature, 
and then I'll add and take away some of the water for about a half hour and then I lay the cup down inside the tank on its side and let them crawl out near the Aptasia. The other issue is the water in here is completely clean water. It doesn't, no chemicals, no anything. You don't have to fear of any other pest getting into your tank. So once you do the water exchange, you don't dump the water out. You submerge the cup inside the tank and they crawl out. And I've done this before in my refugium at one time. I'll check back with you in 30 minutes. So just an update, see them down there? They're moving around. One, two, three, four, and where's five? Oh, <laughs> and five. So there they are. One, two, three, four, five. And these are egg laying. They're the size that can lay eggs. The issue with Bergia is once there's no more Aptasia to eat, they die. That's all they feed on. All right, guys, here I am again, Mr. Magnet. I use these <laughs> magnets for everything. What I've done is I put the magnet inside. These are epoxy coated and then one on the outside. So this way, when I slide the whole cup down into the tank near an Aptasia, it'll stay in place. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's been a half hour of acclimation. They all look quite good in there. And I'm going to slide it down. You can do this in the evening, especially if you have wrasses. But I only have two clowns in here. My peppermint shrimp is out. So there should be no worries. See what I'm doing here? I'm lowering it down and then I'm going to turn it on its side near the rock with the Aptasia on it. Hopefully I can just touch the rock and that way they crawl out and they do their job, usually in the evening hours. So like everything in this hobby, I had to change my method because what was happening is when I had the magnet on the side of the glass to hold it in on the side, the cup was opened right into where one of the Aptasia was, and of course the Aptasia will eat the Bergia. You can't put the cup right on top of the Aptasia because the Bergia may crawl right into the mouth. So I turn the lights down. Well, there's the first one. It's crawled out of the cup, but it's on the outside rim nearing the live rock. So they move I wouldn't say fast, but they crawl. It's probably gonna make its way out onto the live rock now. So he's out and he's working his way already towards an Aptasia. Now these usually, these guys usually work in groups. So I don't know whether what one will do. I've never actually watched them eat an Aptasia. So we'll see what happens here. The others are still inside the cup, so they're not moving too quickly. We'll have to see what happens with those. They may come out at night. They start at the base of the Aptasia and start eating from the base. And these look quite big, but I was told by Jeff that they handle these big ones. So this is the next day, guys. I only see one smaller one missing. The others are still there. So they do take days. They're not gonna just devour all these. I have five Bergia in there, and these are rather large. There was one up here, a smaller one that's not there anymore. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on them over the next several days. All right, I'll keep you posted.